computer's kind of locked up. There it is. Almost. Okay. So the homework is due on Friday. Two problems there. And the uh, exam on Friday, be sure to bring a laptop because you'll need it for the Excel problems. Now today we're doing uh, an analysis called economic service life analysis. And the last several class meetings we've been focusing mainly on public sector projects. Those are the ones where, uh, remember, they're undertaken by government entities. Oftentimes they're done not necessarily to maximize profit, but to maximize benefit or social good. Um, we're back to talking about a method that can be used either for a public sector project or a private project which is intended to generate profits. And so economic service life analysis is applicable to both. Before we start talking about that, are there any questions related to the uh, announcements of the homework and the exam? All right. Economic service life analysis is all about how long should you keep equipment? What's the optimal number of years to own things? And so before we start that analysis, let's talk about what are some of the reasons why you might choose to replace equipment over time. And so uh, one uh, motivating rationale could be that the equipment is starting to wear out. And so it's reduced performance and reduced reliability is starting to cause problems. And so here's a photo of a car in the shop. And uh, if your car continues to break down and you're late for work or you are um, missing sales calls or whatever the case may be, then it may potentially be time to spend the extra money to buy something new because the repair costs, when you include all of the costs, like not only the direct costs, but then also the opportunity costs of what else you could have been doing rather than sitting in the waiting room of the repair place. When you consider all of those costs, then it may be less costly to purchase new equipment. So that's one reason that you might choose to replace an item. Another could be that the old equipment, equipment simply isn't able to do what's needed in the changing environment. And so it could be that this is a photo of a steel plant where they're making steel and there's different grades of steel and over time the requirements of the market may evolve to where if your equipment isn't able to mill something to a adequate precision or if you have a, uh, a server that can no longer run the latest um, standard uh, software that needs to be run. It could be that just simply the requirements of what needs to be accomplished have changed and the old equipment, even though it's maybe functional, it simply can't meet those new targets. A related reason is the idea of obsolescence to where the equipment is still functional but maybe it's just its performance is so slow that other technology that's available makes the old equipment seem undesirable by comparison because it slows down your productivity or other people have more of a competitive advantage by using the newer tools. And so this is a picture of an old Apple computer. This is one of the computers that was available when I was a kid. You know, growing up in middle school, we used to do programming on this. It didn't have a hard drive. It just only had the floppy disks and the screen was just green and black. It didn't even have a color monitor. So, I mean, you could still do word processing on it. You could still run a spreadsheet on an old Apple computer like this, um, but it, it would just be kind of silly. It would be a novelty to use a computer like this when in any kind of a business or production environment. So these are all reasons why you might choose to replace an item. And when we talk about owning an item and how much it costs to own it, um, one of the main components of cost is capital recovery. And we've talked about this already. Uh, who remembers the idea of capital recovery and what are the two components that go into calculating capital recovery? It basically has two pieces. Go ahead. Time and annual worth. What's that? Time and annual worth. Time and annual worth. Uh, that's one way of thinking about it because what we're doing with capital recovery is we're calculating an annual equivalent and we're using amounts at two different times to find that annual equivalent. So 
I think there's definitely truth to what you say. So what are the two cost components that goes into capital recovery? Capital recovery uh, essentially is how much you have to make through your business operations to justify owning a piece of equipment. So let's say, you know, uh, a car. If you wanted to know the capital recovery on the car, you're essentially determining how much revenue each year has to be justified to cover the acquisition cost of that vehicle. And so the two components that go into capital recovery, if you remember the formula for it, it's you're annualizing the first cost, which is at the present, and you're annualizing the salvage value, which is in the future. So that's one component of ownership costs. And then the other component is the maintenance and operation expenses that are independent of how much it costs to acquire the equipment. There's just simply how much you're spending to maintain it and the uh, things like fuel costs and consumables, maybe like tires and oil and so on. So those are the, uh, the two primary components that give us our total cost of ownership. Um, now, this figure is really important. Sometimes on exams, I ask students to interpret a drawing or to sketch something to illustrate a principle. And this is one of the sketches that makes a pretty common appearance on exams. What this explains is that uh, the longer you own something, the lower the capital recovery costs are. And so just to draw it on the board as a reminder, capital recovery there's how much you spent to purchase the item at time zero. So that was a present cost. And then when you sell the item, let's say that this piece of equipment, just for purposes of illustration, we owned for six years and then we sold it. There's this salvage value, which is some amount in the future. And that's an inflow. So capital recovery is basically finding out what's the annual equivalent that takes the difference between the purchase price and the salvage value and annualizes it. So capital recovery is saying the longer you own the, the equipment, the more number of years, you're spreading out the first cost over a greater time horizon. So if you're owning something for a long time, it brings your capital recovery very low. And let me give you an illustration of that. Just in April, I finally sold a car that I had owned since 2009. It was a little Mazda Miata. I bought it used for, I think, $8,500. And then I sold it in April. After owning it for 12 years, I sold it for $3,500. So I owned it for 12 years, and my net difference was only 5000 bucks. And so, you know, like I had a really low capital recovery just because you're spreading out that ownership costs over so many years. But what I was noticing is the longer I owned that car, it was starting to break down. It was getting less reliable. And I was spending more and more on things like replacing the, um, oh, the calipers on the brakes. I had to replace oxygen sensors, the speed sensors. Um, it probably needed new wheels. They, it seemed like they were starting to get maybe a little bent, run into too many curbs, that sort of thing. So the longer you own something, the operating costs are increasing. So this curve is the annual worth of the annual operating costs. And so, you know, the first year I owned my Miata, I don't think I did anything to it. So I'm just going to sketch out some of my expenses. Uh, you know, at the end of the first year, I spent nothing. And then the second year, maybe I paid a little bit in repair costs. The third year, maybe a little bit more. The fourth year, it was getting increasingly expensive. So the longer you own something, you may expect that your operating costs are increasing over time. What we sometimes do is we just find out what's the annualized average. So instead of saying, I'm going to have a different amount every year, if I wanted to find the amount that is the annual equivalent of that, what I could do is I could take all of this to the present and then convert it into a constant annual amount. That is what we're going to be doing in today's technique, where the annual worth of the annual operating costs is you have variable operating costs over time, but you want to find out how much would it be if it was the same cost every year.
That'll be part of our technique today that's built into the template file. So how long you should own something is the number of years that minimize the costs. So what would be the problem with owning the thing only this number of years? Well, if I only owned it this number of years, my capital recovery is too high. So it's not minimizing the expenses. And if I owned it for a really long time, my capital recovery is low, but my annual worth of annual operating cost is high. So economic service life is trying to find out the optimal number of years that you should own equipment. And the decision criteria is own it for the number of years that minimizes your costs. So you just keep it however long is going to be cheapest. Now, in comparisons like this, we have to sometimes compare stuff we already own to equipment that we could replace it with. And so we, one application of economic service life analysis is replacement studies. And when you're doing a replacement study, you're comparing the thing that you already own, which is the defender, to a potential challenger which is the best possible replacement. Um, the market value is how much a piece of equipment could be sold for after a certain number of years. And that's a little bit different from salvage value because salvage value is saying you owned it to the very end of its useful life and now you're just selling it for scrap. But market value is when you sell an item before the end of its useful life and uh, it has more than scrap value you know, because someone else is going to own it for the remaining years of its life. Economic service life is the number of years that you should own a piece of equipment to minimize its cost. And uh, when we do a replacement study and are comparing two options, the first cost of the defender is simply its current market value because the idea is that if you keep what you already own, what you're paying or what you're foregoing is the opportunity to sell it to someone else. And so if you already own a piece of equipment and you're comparing it to a possible replacement, keeping your equipment incurs the cost of not selling it. So you just use the current market value as the defender's first cost. And it's the purchase price for the first cost of the challenger. And then there's one important term that you may have heard before in other contexts, the idea of sunk cost. And uh, sunk cost is kind of um, an emotional reaction that people have when they've spent a lot of money on something and can't quite get over the psychological hurdle that they've already invested so much up to this point. You know, for instance, uh, when I was selling my car, my Miata, it didn't matter that I'd put new tires on it four months ago and that the brakes had been replaced eight months ago. You know, like all of these expenses that I had in my mind doesn't matter to the purchaser. The purchaser just takes for granted that the car has tires, that it has functional brakes. And so all of my previous expenditures doesn't have a direct impact on what the purchase price of the car is going to be. The purchase price of the car is determined only by its condition and not how much I've spent up to that point. There may be an indirect relationship between those two things, but um, there's, uh, there's been a lot written about the, the fallacy of the sunk cost and how people just kind of have an emotional attachment to things when they've spent a lot of money on them up to this point. So we don't include in a replacement study um, the defender versus the challenger. You just do kind of a, a rational analysis of how long the defender is going to last and not how much you spent before now to buy it. All right, so let's take a look at the economic service life problem that we have for today. There's a certain piece of equipment that we're going to spend $20,000 to acquire. And what we want to know is how long should we own it? Now, we have a table that defines the market value if we sell it at a certain point. So we buy it at time zero for $20,000. And if we just own it only for one year, then we could sell it for 10,000 at the end of the first year. And so you can tell that you, we'd have a pretty high capital recovery if we just are spreading out that difference over the single year. Because we paid 20,000 and we're only recovering 10,000. 
We also have data that tells us what's the operating costs for a certain year of ownership. So during the first year, it's $5,000 of operating costs. Now let's look at the second year. We still are buying the equipment for $20,000 at time zero, but if you sell it at the end of the second year, then you only get $8,000 back as the sales price. So uh, your market value is lower because less useful life remaining, but we've spread out the capital recovery over more years. And so that's going to bring the capital recovery ownership costs lower. But you'll notice that the operating costs are beginning to creep up. So the question is saying, for 10% interest rate, what's the economic service life? It's asking, how long should we own this? Should we own it just for one year and then sell it? Like, is that what will give us the cheapest experience? Or is it better to own it for two years and then sell it? We want to know, for each one of these possibilities, what's the ownership costs? And then we're going to pick the one that's the lowest. OK, so let me open up the. Uh, template file that I shared with you. And let's take a brief look at how to translate the problem statement into the uh, column headings that's given in the template file. All right, economic service life. All right, so the problem statement tells us that the interest rate is 10%. So we can put that in, obviously, in the cell for I. 10%, so 0.1. And the first cost is 20,000. And since that's an outflow, we need to put a negative sign on that. So minus 20,000. All right. Now, Table, uh, columns A, B, and C, that's all given data. So I won't talk you through the process of putting that in. Um, column D says it's the net present value of the range so far. And so what that means is for this first row, for one year, you'll just do the NPV fall function of just the single year. For the second year, you'll do the NPV function of these two, because you've owned it for two years. For the uh, third year, you're going to use the NPV function and highlight the three cells that are above and including that year. So that's kind of the trend that you follow. Here in column E, it says to use the payment function. So what you're doing is you're annualizing from some present value back to the annual. Now, capital recovery, you can use the payment function for that and put in both the first cost and the market value in the same function. And then the total annual worth is the sum of column E and column F. So I'm going to pause for a second, give you a few moments to uh, think through this puzzle. And I'll be circulating around with the answers if you want to check on how your progress is. And then I'll demonstrate the solution up on the screen in a few minutes. OK, so let's follow along uh, putting this solution together from the beginning. Um, $10,000 is how much we can sell the equipment for if we only own it a single year. If you own it for two, you can sell it for $8,000 or $6,000 if you own it for three years. Then the value drops dramatically to $2,000. And finally, if you own it the full five years, then it has no market value. So its operating costs increase over time. And we're making those minus because that's the cost is an outflow. And it's important to type the right number of zeros. So I'm watching myself here so I don't key in the wrong thing. You can't get the right answer if you do a typo in the input data. All right, so 
present value of the cumulative operating costs today. So what this formula is doing is it's saying, um, if you just own it for a single year, these operating costs are at year one. We want to take them to year zero. So we can do that with either the PV function or more usefully for other rows besides this one is the NPV function. NPV and the rate 10% and the value for this year is just the one. All right, so again, NPV function, and I'm going to anchor the reference here to the rate just by pressing the F4 button. And now I'm going to highlight these two. What I'll do is I'll anchor the reference up here to C8. And then that way I can drag it down and it'll always look at C8 for the first value in the range. But then the second value in the range will be associated with whatever row that I'm on. Um, uh, okay, typo, right? Thank you. All right. So what I need to do now is just, since the range is starting at the top and continuing down to whatever row you're on, I can drag that through the rest of them. So now what this is saying is if you had 5,000 in year one, 6,500 in year two, 8,000 in year three, and so on and so forth, so if you're experiencing all of these operating costs, and then through the entirety of five years, what is the present equivalent of those? That's what we've ca calculated here in this cell. So 30,178 at time zero is the same economically at 10% interest rate per year. That 30,000 is the same as a lump sum as these variable amounts over time. And the reason why we do that is so that in column E, we can calculate the annual worth, which would be the amount you'd pay every year. Rather than having a different amount every year, you need to annualize the operating costs. And so now I'm going to do the payment function because I'm taking this present value and spreading it back out over a certain number of years. So PMT, the rate, anchor the reference with the F4 button, N, whatever row we're on, and then this amount that's going in is a present value. So the way that you can think of it is the operating costs are changing every year. This is how much you'd have to pay as a lump sum at time zero to have enough to cover all of these operating costs. Or if you didn't want to pay the lump sum and if you didn't want to pay a different amount every year, this is how much you could pay as a constant amount every year. So you'd pay this at year one, at year two, at year three. So it's kind of like you're spreading out the variability. And there are plenty of cases where that happens. Um, some electric customers, when, when you have an electric bill that changes a lot over the seasons, you know, where you're using way more electricity in the summer for air conditioning, some people ask the electric company to just charge them the same amount every month rather than experiencing those wide swings. And so that's kind of what we're doing here in column E is um, instead of having variable operating costs every year, we've calculated how much would you have to pay in operating costs each year so that it's a constant amount. Yeah. So that's like if you sold it after like five years, then it would be that constant amount or four years would be that constant amount? Yes. Okay. So if you have three years of ownership, then for instance, you'd have to pay 6405 as just your operating costs for each of the three years. So you'd pay that as your operating costs at one, at two, and at three. And if you own the item for four years, then you'd have to pay 7,072 for your operating cost bill, and that would be a constant amount that you paid at the end of each year. Okay, now capital recovery, we're doing the payment function with two things going in. We're putting in the present value is the first cost. So I'm going to do the minus of the present value. And then the future value is the market value. So I'll do minus of the market value. So what the capital recovery doing is doing is it's finding the difference between the first cost and the market cost. And so you'd think it's just 
the ownership for a single year, wouldn't it be just 20,000 minus 10,000? But then what you have to remember is that the time value of money means that this $10,000 isn't as valuable as the 20,000 that you spent. So it's the time value of money taken into account. Oh, did I not anchor a reference up here to? Yes, thank you. All right. So let's see if that is more successful. OK. So we see that the longer we own the item, our capital recovery cost is going down. So that broadly follows what we saw with this conceptual graph. The longer you own it, the capital recovery is coming down, but the annual worth of the operating costs is going up. So that mirrors this concept here. So what we want to do is add the two together, add together the operating costs and capital recovery, and find the lowest point for the two. So to add them together, we just simply go like this. And here's our lowest, the cheapest, the best thing to do from an ownership cost perspective is to own this item for three years and then sell it. Because that is the, uh, the economic service life that's associated with the lowest total annual worth of costs. Okay, so there's two separate things we've done today. We've done a spreadsheet technique, which is great, but also the conceptual part of it's important. So you kind of have to understand like the reasoning for why we calculated these things in the order that we did uh, and what it all means. And so don't get fixated just on, you know, like which cell reference you anchored and what goes into the spreadsheet function. It's more than just the mechanics of Microsoft Excel. And it's also important to understand why we choose this minimum point. Because our objective with owning things is it should be as cheap as possible. All right, so that's all I have for you today. Remember that the uh, things on your plate is the homework assignment, two problems, one of which is an economic service life like this. The exam on Friday, and I didn't put it here on the announcement slide, but of course there's also the project. All right, see you Wednesday.